everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus Age of Darkness, the Horus Heresy Primark painting tutorial. And today we are painting Jagatai Khan. Yes, the Primark of the White Scars himself. I'm holding it a little bit weird because, of course, naturally, he has been built in a sort of sub-assembly. Not really. Basically, there's three components. There's that one. <laughs> that bit of rock. We've got the Primark himself, which we'll just scooch out over there. And then we've got his scenic base as well. And as per usual with our Primark painting tutorials, we're going to paint the Primark. Then we're going to paint the bases at the same time. So with all that in mind, it's all been primed in grey sear. And we're going to grab our paints, grab our brushes, Grab a slightly smaller painting handle and we're going to jump in and start painting in. Painting a Primark is always an interesting experience because they are such complex, highly detailed miniatures as you can see here that you kind of can't really approach painting them in the same way as you would any others. You have to kind of take them a section by section at a time and sometimes you have to kind of finish one and other times you have to kind of leave it so that you don't make a bunch of mistakes over a finished piece. And the Khan is no exception. He's reasonably simple to paint. There's not tons and tons of com complex colors all over the place, but what we are going to do, slightly weirdly, is we're gonna start with all of his red details. Now this is gonna include the outside and the inside of the cape, the tabard here, his gloves, and this kind of skirt section type area just here and these are all going to be the same sort of bright blood red color all that white famous white scars color as it were now the color we're going to be making is a roughly four parts blood angels red to one part contrast medium and we're going to be doing a couple of layers of this and this is because we don't want to just go straight in with blood angels red because we might leave ourselves open to getting some kind of nasty dark pools and things that we don't want so we're going to thin it down a little bit, but when we thin it down, of course, it means we get a slightly weaker colour, so it means we have to brighten it back up. So we're just going to start by st sticking our brush just in there and just painting in these nice big long brush strokes like this to get a nice smooth finish of Blood Angels Red all over our cloak. Now don't worry about getting it over the top of any of the trim or any of the icons. That's to be expected at this point. But you see, my thinking here is the main armor color is white. But there's not a lot of white armor. There's quite a lot of trim. And of course, to make things a little bit more simple on ourselves, we'd want to paint the white and the gold at the same time. But if we do the white and the gold first, that means we end up doing white and gold on the armor and then coming back to doing gold later on the tr trim. And then we come back to do gold later on in various other places. So rather than kind of going at it like that, we're just going to try and go in a most simple and somewhat logical way. We're doing it this way. So just take your time here. We are looking for that beautiful, smooth finish. So with that done, across all of our red fabric details, what we're now going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing again. Roughly four parts Blood Angels Red to one part Contrast Medium. And we're just going to go all over the top. And as you can see right there, you get that beautiful deep red exactly what we're after. So 
So with that done, all of our red is now applied and it looks absolutely fantastic. Now we're not gonna finish it off just yet. In fact, what we are gonna do is move on to the rest of the colors because at this point, if we get any mistakes on there, we can easily clean them up later when we come to finish off the red details. But if we finish off the red details now, it becomes more annoying. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some apothecary white and we're gonna apply this all over the top of his white armor. Now be on the lookout for little sections of flat, smooth arm um, pieces that are going to be white, because they are few and far between. We've got, for example, the large areas on the legs. We've got some areas on his arms, but a lot of it is actually just different colors. And this is what I mean. It's like it's the main armor color, but it's not all that present. So we're just gonna get this all over, just like this. But what we're also going to do is we're going to use this apothecary white on any of the fur trim on any of his cloth. So you've got some just here. And you've got it all the way around the main cloak as well. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some Basilicon and Gray. We're gonna paint this over all of the black details. Now this is gonna include areas like these armor panels here. It's also gonna include the soft joints in his armor and the sword scabbard. It will eventually include the hair and his beard as well, but we're gonna leave his face until the very end. So just for now, concentrate on these types of areas. And don't worry about that face and hair. So with that Basilicanum Grey applied, what we're then going to do is take some Black Templar. I'm going to add this over the top of the Basilicanum Grey. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some wild wood and we're going to apply this to any of his kind of brown leather. So this is going to include areas like the holster, just under here. Like so. We've got the kind of leather sections of his belt. So like just in there in the middle. But do remember that because <laughs> the kind of trim of the belt is a metallic. We've got areas such as this little strap just there. We've got this one that disappears up. Like so. We've got Areas such as these tassels, well, not tassels, I guess they're kind of like baturges in a way, sort of, kind of. Like so. And there's one just there as well. We've got this belt here. Again, don't worry too much about avoiding all those little metallic studs and things. It's all okay. It's all perfectly all right to color those in at this point. Belt continues round. Got a little blob just there on the glove, which we're just going to mop up with a clean brush. We've also got areas such as these little kind of leather parts around both of his arms. Like 
like so. There's another one just in here. Like that. And then we've also got these large areas just coming down here on his back like this. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to make a roughly one-to-one -one mix of shyish purple and flesh terror's red. And we're going to apply this over the red leather, which is going to be this kind of thing <laughs> that comes down either side of him. Okay, so with that done, we're done with kind of applying contrast paints just for the moment because, well, there's a ton of metallics on Jagged Icon and this is where it's going to start kind of really coming to life. So the first metallic we're going to be using is Retributor Armor and this is going to be for all of his warm sort of gold details. Now there's a ton of these, but there's also like kind of this kind of more worn sort of, well, it's going to be really Lord Brass. Spoiler alert. There's this kind of more worn out gold brass color that exists around the model. So I would recommend having the box art in front of you, just so you can pick out the correct areas. Or alternatively, you can wait until the next clip where I'll show you where to place all of this Retributor armor is. But essentially, the Retributor armor is the primary color in terms of the amount of metallics that are on here. But it's not the only one. So with all of that Retributor armor applied, as you can see, to all of these sections, what we're now gonna do is we're going to take some thinned down lead belcher I'm going to apply this to a number of different sections again. So what we're going to do firstly is we're going to pick out all of the kind of scale mail that's hiding in and around the miniature. So we've got these bits here, like that. And there's this little bit just in here as well, which we'll do so we don't forget it. Like that. This bit just in here. Just like that. We've got the sword blade, of course, but we've also got some scale mail that is hiding around the arms. So we've got just in there. Like that. We've got the mechanical areas of the backpacks. We've got the vents just under here. We've got areas such as the barrel of the gun. Just in there like that and as well as the kind of sort of handle section buckles and 
like so. Basically, once again, anywhere of the other areas that you want to be silver by checking out the box art. Or you can, of course, wait until the next clip where we'll rotate around again. And so with all of that silver applied to all of these locations, as you can see, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some thinned down Rune Lord brass. And this is gonna be used on all of our remaining metallics. So we've got these little plates just under here. for example. We've got this little device just here. the trim on the scabbard, We've got the cross guard of his tolwar, we got these medallions on the chest, we've got this bit of trim and these kind of studded areas. So got this whole section around here as well and of course any other remaining trim and metallic details around the model so with that done all of our metallics are now applied or at least our base coats are we've just got one last base coat left to do and that is on all of these tassels now we're going to be using two colors for this we're going to be using pterodon turquoise and leviathan blue and what we're going to do we're going to load up our brush with some pterodon turquoise i'll demonstrate here on this big one what we're going to do is we're just going to paint this pterodon turquoise all over the tassel like so make sure to get both sides like that. Then I'm going to wash the brush and then we're going to grab a little bit of Leviathan Blue and then just towards the base, whilst it's still wet, we're going to add in Leviathan Blue. Just like that. Give us a cheeky little blend on the detail. And then we're just going to replicate that on the other two. So with that done, all of our base coats are now on on Jagged Icon, excluding his face, but we've already been over that. We're not doing it just yet. So what we are going to do now is we're going to add some shades. Now the first one, keeping it nice and simple, is going to be Fire Slayer Flesh. I'm going to get this all over all of our Retributor Armor sections, just like this. Keeping it nice and simple because it's gonna get real complicated. <laughs> so 
So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. I'm going to use this to shade a couple of areas of the rune or brass, but not all of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this to shade the armor pieces and the trim. So we've got those little bits down there. And this medallion on his elbow, like so. We've got the, whatever this is. Like that. Got our medallions here. Now the only parts of the Rune Lord, Rune Lord Brass that we've applied that we're not going to shade at this point in time is any of the soft details. So what I mean by that is areas such as the trim on the cloak. We're not going to be doing that with the wildwood. For now, we're just going to be doing the rest of it like this. So, still sticking with wildwood, only this time we're going to do six parts contrast medium to one part wildwood. What we're going to do is we're going to add this along the fur that we added that apothecary white to earlier on. Only we're not going to do it across all of it. We're just going to add it to kind of like the vast majority of it, but in we just want to leave a couple of patches just for the moment because we're going to colour those in with a slightly different colour. So for example, just here on the cloak, we go down to around about there. Just going to make sure that we've done it on the inside track as well. Like so. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Basilicanum Grey and Contrast Medium. I'm going to apply this to those sections that we haven't done on the fur. Like so. We're going to apply this over the top of the Rune Lord Brass on the soft areas. And we're also going to apply this to any of the silver detailing on the body. But again, I warned you it was going to get complicated. <laughs> I'm not going to apply any of this to the sword blade. Because that is once again going to be a slightly different colour. So with that done, we're then going to take some Griff Charger Grey. You'll be pleased to hear this is the last shade for a little while. 
And we're going to apply this over the top of the toolbar's blade. Just like this. So with that Griff Charger Grey applied to the blade, Jagatai Khan now has pretty much all of his base coats, except of course, that face. And that's what we're gonna work on now. So the color that we're gonna use first for this is Dark Oath Flesh. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take some of this on our brush and we're just gonna start at the back here and we're just gonna pull it forwards onto the face itself. Now don't worry about getting this over his beard or even over his hair because that is going to be a very dark black so it doesn't matter too much if we get some of this flesh color on there it's not like we're painting him blonde for example which would probably matter instead we're just going to get this darker flesh all over just like this So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to make a roughly two parts Kislev flesh to one part Ungor flesh mix. And we're going to use this to effectively re-layer all of his skin with that dark oath flesh basically occupying the darkest recesses of his face. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to work on that face tattoo. Now the colour we're going to be using for this is Blood Angels Red, and this is really, really tricky. But the reason we did that previous mix of Kislev Flesh and Uncle Flesh is so that if we make any mistakes, we can recorrect it with that same mix again. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny amount of Blood Angels Red on the tip of our brush. I'm going to start just up here by the corner of his hair. What we want to do is draw a tiny little line coming down just like that really 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 tiny then we want to change course go back the other way a sort of tiny V shape just like this and then from the tip of that V from that second line we've drawn Basically, they're going to do a diagonal line that comes all the way down to around about there, between his eyes. Then we're just going to take a really small amount here. I'm going to bring it down just over the, that kind of recess in his nose, and it stops just there, like that. Now the second part of it, you want to look at one, two, three strands, and you want to start doing the lightning there, like so. And what we want is we want two more V shapes. So we want to come down like this, and we're going to start our next our V going to come down a little bit further, start our next V. And then we're going to bring it out to the tip. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Basilicanum Grey. And we're going to add this to his moustache, his beard and his hair. 
because as I mentioned before, these are going to be black, but we want these to be a nice dark black. So we are going to be doing exactly as we did on the black details earlier. We're going to be adding this Basilicanum Grey first as our pre-shade. Just like this. So with that done, just whilst we're waiting for the Basilicanum Grey to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny amount of Dark Oath Flesh. Not very much of this at all. What we're going to do is we're basically going to recess shade his face. Just around the eyes, around his cheekbones. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Flayed One Flesh. Not very much of this at all. I'm now going to use this to add some highlights. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some black Templar. What we're going to do, firstly, we're going to colour in his entire of his eyeballs. Just like this. And then we're also going to use this Black Templar over the top of his beard and his hair. And so with that Black Templar applied, we're then going to take a touch of Flesh Terror's Red. Apply this to his wrap. So with that flesh terror is red applied, we're then going to take some lead belcher. I'm going to paint in the kind of, well, the trim of his hair wrap. And so with that lead belcher applied, we then want to take a teeny, tiny, tiny little dot of Screaming Skull. And we want to apply this in each corner of his eyes. Just like that. So with that done, the Khan is now at what I would call a war hipster battle ready. But of course, we are not going to leave it there. No, absolutely not. What we are going to do is we're going to take him to the next level because he is a Primark and he is deserving of it, as is every model on the channel. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to go right back to the beginning and we're going to start working on all of the red details. Now the colour we're going to be making first is a roughly two to one mix of two parts Mephiston Red to one part Evil Sun Scarlet. And we're going to be using this thinned down a little bit more than we normally would so we get lots of control and we get a nice smooth fit finish on this. What we're going to do on the cloak back here is just going to do these kind of really wide highlights across the raised parts of all the red and effectively we're going to do this across all of the red details Just like this. Only what we're of course going to do is avoid anywhere where the shade is really settled. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Evil Sun Scarlet just on its own. And we're now going to apply much narrower type of highlight. Still quite wide. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a thin down Fire Dragon Bright to add a really narrow highlight to all of our red details. So for example, just down here on our little tabard. Just like this. We want to go over all of our red details, so including our big cape, our big cape, our big cape. However, here on the big cape, don't necessarily want to run this along the entire of the highlight as it'll look a little bit flat if we do that. So we're just going to kind of do about three quarters of each of them. Just like this sort of thing. So with that done, as a final flourish, what we're going to do is we're going to create a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part Flesh Terrors Red mix. I'm going to use this as a glaze over the top of the cloak and the gloves. The rest of it, we don't need to do this, but for these two particular details, we just want to really kind of reinforce that really nice deep red and just blend all of those colours together. Just like this. So 
So with that Flesh Terror's red glaze applied, we've now got this beautiful red cloak and gloves. And all of those red details are now finished. The only red one that isn't finished is the kind of sort of inner jacket type area. And well, we're not going to be doing that just yet because what we are in fact going to be doing is we're going to be moving on to the white details, specifically the armour. And the colour we're going to be using first is Corax White. And what we're going to do here is we're now just going to relayer Corax White over the top. of our armour, just avoiding any of the trim, any of the areas where the shades have really settled. We might take a couple of co thin coats, so just take your time. I'm going to brighten this right up. So with that Corax white applied, what we're then going to do is going to take some white scarf. I'm going to use this to add a highlight to our white panels. Now, mercifully, there aren't very many edges here. Although, perhaps less mercifully, there's an awful lot of <laughs> trim. <laughs> So with all of that done, the white armor is now finished. So we are going to once again move on. And this time it's gonna to be toward the black. Now this is gonna be quite fiddly because we've got all of these little panels on the black armor sections to highlight. But we soldier on. <laughs> I don't know if I've actually said it. The colour we're going to be using is Dawnstone. So with that done, just before we add our little spot highlight, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Evil Sun Scarlet and we're going to very, very carefully here Pick out each of the stitches. Just like this. So with that done, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some administratum gray. I'm gonna add this to the corners there's a little, tiny little spot highlight on all of our black details. So with that done, all of the black details are now finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on. I'm gonna highlight the red leather here using some squig orange. And so with that done, we're then gonna take some Bane Blade Brown. I'm gonna use this to highlight all of our dark brown leather. So with that done, it is now time to work on all of those metallics, those 
lovely, lovely metallic. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to take some skull crusher brass. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to use this to basically relayer our retributor armor sections. Now there aren't that many large areas that need doing this. The rest of it can really be covered in the highlighting stage. However, we've got these couple of little areas just around here on the front. Like so. We've got the areas between the rivets on the flat trim. So there's areas like this plate just here. And around the legs. On the back, we've got the sort of crescent moons and the area just in there, like that, on those medallions. And on the shoulder pads, we've got the kind of flat open areas of the design. Like that, and any other kind of wide open spaces that you can see. Anything that is small or has kind of two sides, kind of like for example on the gauntlets here, you don't need to worry about doing this because, like I said, that highlight is going to pick that up. But on these wider open sections, we just want to add a little bit more brightness in. Similarly, what we just did with the skull crusher brass, what we're going to do is we're going to take some rune lord brass. I'm going to use this on any of our rune lord brass sections that need a very similar kind of treatment. So, for example, just there around the scabbard. On the, well, the scabbard. <laughs> uh, what we're also going to do is just around. these armor plates like so and then also on our trim on our fabric So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight both the Rune Lord Brass and the Retributor Armor areas with some Canoptec Alloy. So with that Canoptic Alloy applied, as you can see, it's really elevated all of those metallics and well, he's looking absolutely fantastic. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to work on our final metallic, which is all the silver. And the colour we're going to be using for this is Iron Hand Steel. And what we're going to do first is on the sword, 
is we're just going to layer this iron hand steel over the top of the cutting edge. Of the blade just like that just to make it look nice and sharp that edge we're just going to leave for now just like that However, what we're also going to do is we're going to use a slightly smaller brush here because we're going to be using this iron hand steel to highlight all of our silver details. But we're also going to use this now to pick out any of the little studs and things in the leather. So we've got our scale mail down here that we're just going to highlight like that all of our studs and things for example here on the gloves as well we're just going to pick out these little things just like that so with that iron hand still applied we're then going to take some thins down storm host silver i'm going to use this to highlight the cutting edge of the blade as well as the power nodes. Just like this. Additionally, we're also going to use this to highlight the dull edge. So with that now done, what we're going to do, we're going to very, 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 very carefully take some Talisar Blue. I'm going to paint this over the top of the power node. And I'm going to bring it around about halfway down that kind of both of these little power nodes down the little supply lines of the power. And then what we want to do is we want to just draw a very small single lightning line. Going around the base of the blade like that. And you should quickly do the same thing on the other side. So with that, the sword, the silver and all the metallics are complete. He's not quite finished though. In classic war hipster fashion, I have forgotten to do a couple of things. So. The first one is we're going to take some administratum gray. gray. We're going to very gently dry brush this over the top of the fur. Very, very, very gentle. Very, very carefully. We don't have to do all of it. Just a couple of spots here and there. And this time, I swear it's the last time, we're going to take some <laughs> flesh there as red. I'm going to apply this over the little gems. Just here on the legs. Here. And here. And 
just there as well. Like so. So with that done, Jagatai Khan is finished. Or is he? Because of course we have the base, which he's wobbling around in right now. As you can see, he's looking pretty awesome. So what we are going to do is we are going to move on to painting that base. So we're just going to deconstruct him. Now as we do this, we're going to be doing the same thing on him. If anything in particular calls out about him, we shall, of course, show dem demonstrate it and show off. But for the majority of this, we're going to be focusing on the main main base itself. So with all that in mind, we're going to do something we haven't done here on the channel before. We're going to use Mechanica Standard Grey. <laughs> well, we've used Mechanica Standard Grey, but we're going to be using Mechanica Standard Grey across the entire of our stone structure. It's because I really like the tone that they've gone for on games, well, on Forge World. So I just want to replicate that because I think it looks awesome. And Basilicon Grey isn't quite right for that tone. So I'm just going to go all over like this with the Mechanica's Standard Grey. If you need help to figure out where to place this, you can of course check out the product photography on Forge World. We just want to go over all of it like this with the Mechanica Standard Grey. And then once that's done, we shall return. So with that Mechanica's standard grey applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some lead belcher. I'm going to paint this over only of the pipes and things. We're just ignoring the marine for the moment. This isn't quite a how to paint Death Guard tutorial just yet. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to shade all of the silver and the grey with some null oil. And it's full on classic mode here, guys. But don't get used to it. So with that non oil applied all over those details, it's still a little wet in places, but that's okay because what we're going to do now is we're going to brighten up the flat surfaces and we're going to once again use Mechanica's standard grey for this. So for example, just here on this front section, we're just going to apply this Mechanica's standard grey all over it like that. Same again just here. Like so. We just want to do this on anywhere that's kind of open and outward facing. We want to avoid anywhere where the shade is really settled. Just like that. I want to avoid any of the recesses as well. Now this will take a bit of time. You don't have to do this everywhere. You create a lot of nice variation on the base if you don't. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some snake bite leather and we're going to apply this to some of the kind of dust and the soil 
and various little other sections just to create a little bit of dirt around the base. Like this. And then what we can also do is use snake bite leather. <laughs> Excuse me. Use a bit of snake bite leather like this. And then we take the majority of it off. Use your thumb or a bit of tissue paper. And then just in certain areas around the kind of structure itself, we can add a little bit, of almost like a stipple effect. So that snake bite leather applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to give the whole thing a dry brush of Dawnstone. And we just want to get this all over, including over our dirt. Try where possible to avoid the marine. So with that Dawnstone dry brush applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a very gentle dry brush of Administratum Grey. I'm just going to add this, not all over, but just add kind of a little bit more variation. Kind of concentrate this more towards the sharpest points of the base and the rock features. So with that done, this is how the entire of the base is shaping up. It's looking pretty awesome, even if I do say so myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on now very quickly. We're going to take some skeleton hoard and we're going to apply this to each of our skulls. And yes, normally I would deconstruct before we do this, but they're skulls. Come on now. We can just apply this over these two skulls here. There's one on the Khan's base, just there, like that. And there's another one just here. So with that done, as I said, I hope you didn't let your skeleton horde grow legs and walk away because what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be painting in our Death Guard Marine's armour. Now the colour we're going to be making is a roughly three parts contrast medium to one part skeleton horde mix. I'm going to be applying this all over the pale Death Guard armour. Just like this. Now it's very, very, very thin so it's very easy to let this skeleton horde get away from you. So just be very careful that you don't get any large dark pools. Just take your time as you would normally painting any form of Space Marine. You just want to get this all over. Just 
like this. We are ignoring the Death Guard's pauldrons. So with that done, just whilst we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Militarum Green. I'm going to apply this over the shoulder pads. There we go. I'm right back to calling them shoulder pads. So with that Militarum Green applied, what we're then going to do is take some Blood Angels Red. I'm going to apply this over the top of his guts. So with that done, we're then going to take some Black Templar and we're going to apply this over the soft joints in our Space Marines armour. I realise that I didn't mention in the last clip that we were going to use the Blood Angels right over the eye lenses as well, which is of course what I've done as you can see. And in the spirit of not forgetting to say things again, we're also going to use this Black Templar over the top of the casing of the bolt pistol. So with that done, we're then going to take some thins down Retributor armor. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the trim on our Space Marine. Just like this. Now we are going to ignore the sort of death card symbols and the legion numer numerical on the shoulder pad and on the chest. Because those are going to be silver. But otherwise, I'm going to get this on all of the trim. And so with that Retributor armor applied, we're then going to take some lead belcher. I'm going to paint in essentially all of the remaining details on our Death Guard Space Marine. So with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to add some shading. And the first one we're going to add is Cryptic Armor Shade Gloss. I'm going to add this over the top of all the gold. And so with that done, we're then going to once again take some Nuln Oil. I'm going to use this to shade all the silver. And with that Nuln Oil applied, we're then going to take some blood for the blood god. I'm going to add this all over his guts. And we can just be a little bit messy here. It's rare that having your stomach open is ever a clean affair.
So with that done, we now just got a couple of highlights to add and then we're finished. So the first one that we're gonna take is Pallid Witch Flesh. I'm gonna use this to pick out all of the rivets and edges around the Space Marine's armor. So with that now done, we're then going to take some Canoptic Alloy and we're going to use this to highlight all of our gold. And so with that done, we're then going to take our final highlight and that is going to be some Iron Hand Steel, just on the sharpest points of all the silver. Just like this. So with that done, the scenic base is now finished, as is Jagatai Khan's base, as is our bit of rock. So all that remains is to do the kind of small, tiny amount of negative space that you can see on the base. You can do this in whatever way you want to. And of course, we've got the base rooms as well. And that is, again, painter's choice. So here it is then, Jagatai Khan, the Primark that my stream bought is finally finished. He's absolutely fantastic. I'm so, so, so happy with him. Thank you so much to all of you during that infamous Custodes Army stream that were able to donate to the channel for me to be able to afford a Primark and, well, this Primark in particular. Really, 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 really happy with it. I hope you're happy with it. This is the result of your kindness. So thank you so much to all of you and I hope you have fun painting your own Jagatai Khans out there, you Age of Darkness fans. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, exactly like these awesome folks have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.